Warning. The Dragon Between podcast may contain language and adult humor that is unsuitable for those 13 years and younger. Viewer discretion is advised. You're listening to the Dragon Between podcast, a 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons campaign that takes place in the Eberron pulp fantasy setting created by Keith Baker. New episodes are recorded every Sunday and are released on the following week. You can find the video version on the YouTube channel. And if you like what you see and hear, feel free to drop us a like, comment, and don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter for updates and news on the podcast. Thank you for listening, and now on with the show. The characters pressed on, navigating the dimly lit, twisting tunnels with Kip, the mechanical guard drake, taking point ahead of the group. Following a brush with a cave-in, the party encounter resistance in the form of shogunate troopers and a large reptilian creature. The group deals with the threat, but not before one is able to escape deeper in the cavern system. The characters give chase after the soldier and find a cloaked stranger feeding a handful of gemstones to hungry Zorn. After being asked to offer tribute to Jabal Almwat, music elects to destroy the duo, casting Flame Strike. The odd humanoid is then revealed to be a hideous mutated shifter. The party is ultimately victorious and learn that the mutated shifter was gestating eight spawn, one of which is taken in by Red. Lathana notices fresh tracks leading to a northwestern tunnel and directs her companions to yet another cavern, cha- cavern chamber. The roar of a mud waterfall fills the characters' ears as they take in their surroundings. The party then moves to investigate the western section of the chamber, finding a branching tunnel filled with a bright violet light. The group enters the tunnel and find themselves in a chamber filled with crystal pods familiar to Red. As the party begins to explore the chamber, they observe the corpse of an armored warrior currently being feasted on by two familiar children. Excellent. Yes. Mm. And who could those familiar children be? Hansel and Gretel. That's very possible. All right. So, Red. You and Lathana see it first. Um, The body slumped against the tubes. And then two toddler-sized individuals, very filthy, covered in slime, just gnawing away. That's the first thing you see. And just beyond uh, the columns and tubes, you can see shapes of humanoids in the glowing violet light moving about. Some of them uh, look like they're attempting to remove the pods from the stalactite stalagmite configuration. What would you like to do? Red's gonna go straight for the babies. Okay. Um, Lithana would follow after her and um, keep her hand on her uh, knife just in case, but try to uh, still be inviting somehow. <laughs> okay. Well, what about the rest of you? Do we see it yet? Uh, we're kind of conga lining behind them all. And let me share a map with you. If you haven't already pulled it up. Uh-oh, here it comes the moment of truth. Comes the moment of truth where your computers crash. Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> All right, there we go. You can, once it all loads for you guys, you can test it out. I had to delete a lot of layers to try and get this to work. 
And then they did the update, so who knows if that actually helped. Well, it seems to be a lot faster. Well, that's good. Hey, it looks like, well, I saw that somebody was trying to move her, move himself. What's going on up there? Why do we stop? So, Lathana, you're moving straight into the room with Red? Um, yeah, she will uh, make sure she accompanies uh, Red when she goes to the children. Okay. How tall is this uh, walkway? Uh, it's about 15 feet high. I'm going to leapfrog Reuven and come walking up kind of curiously looking to see what they're looking at. Okay. So, Red, as you get closer to these, uh, <clears throat> closer into the cavern, um, the cavern, it, even though it's brightly lit, it's very difficult to tell the exact height of the chamber. Um, mainly because of how um, many stalactites there are hanging from the ceiling, the cavern ceiling, and the the various um, width and uh, height of them. And as you are all getting closer into the cavern, um, the two diminutive creatures now turn and look in the direction of all of you as you're entering into the cavern and immediately start running towards the group of you. They look, they look like feral. Um, well, Endy looks like he, besides the gross um, rem remnants of the, the gelatinous yellow fluid, um, he has like almost like a chitinous, leathery um, scales all over him. Mostly covering where, wherever there's not fur, his bare skin is covered in these like chitinous, um, almost like snake scales or dragon scales. Daisy, Indy. And as they rush um, towards the group of you, the lot of you, um, they wherever you are standing within the chamber, they run through your legs and make a beeline towards Red. And Daisy yells out, Mama! And runs in, up your leg and jumps into your arms, if you accept her. Yeah, yeah, I accept. <laughs> this is so sweet. My, my babies. Yeah, I, I was like already like when they ran, Red was probably already like starting to drop to her knees, like weapon discarded. And as you're looking at Daisy, you can see she has gashes and cuts all over her. And you're, as you're you're giving her a once over looking at her, you can see that the it looks like they're slowly closing. Yeah, I would nuzzle, Red would nuzzle into them. Okay. And like hold them very close. Um, and, and shift the little, the other little sad baby too around. So that she's just a pile. You're just pile a pile of, of children. Dirt. Um, Endy yeah. is just sitting at your foot and it looks like he's chewing on a, um, a dismembered hand, which is holding something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna boop his nose and, and take it from him and okay. check it out. Uh, he doesn't want to let go. He, he oh. re reluctantly lets go after a moment. Oh, 
I'll pry open the, the fingers to see what it's holding. Uh, it looks like a leather journal of some sort. Ooh. I'll kind of shift, sit, sit down to shift the babies into my lap so I can read it really okay. quickly. Or I'll skip put it, through it. I'll put it in your inventory so that you can read it and you can share the information with your friends. It's like somebody got kicked from the session. Did you have to I restart? Think... I think you had to restart his whole computer. Yeah, Derek's gone. Oh, man. Oh, no. Yeah, the map is still pretty rough, kind of. Like, I see people slowly inching around. Yeah, it's it's still a little rough. Might have to unlock the tokens to let you guys move yourselves around. Baby steps, guys. You know, they've had, they've had years, uh, you know, and a, pan a pandemic to deal with. So, gotta cut them a little slack. Seems to me they would have a lot of free time to work on it. Yeah. Right. And the scribbles are are those in common? <clears throat> uh, it's in your uh, inventory as a leather journal, hmm. and it's um, as you you start to thumb through it, you can see it. Even you have dark vision, you make out shapes, but the the violet light is super bright in here. And as you're looking at it, it looks like it has pages of script written in a language that you don't understand. But you eventually come across um, some passages that are in common. Okay. All right, reading. Yeah. Like most of what you see, you see what look like gobbledygook wizard stuff. Formulas, diagrams, uh, drawings of dissections and autopsies of various types of creatures. And then there, there's a there's a, pa a few passages. Um, one talking about something called seromorphosis. Feel free to read through that as everybody else tells me what they're doing. Will do. Uh, Zito is going to be examining these gemstones. Uh, yeah, you see um, very large clusters of six inch to a foot thick purple crystals clusters of them all over the place and as you're looking at them you can see now that um, some of them are are coming up out of the ground some are coming out of the very walls themselves at various angles and clusters singles doubles and it almost seems like the walls seem like they're breathing like as you're as you're star you're staring at the wall it almost seems like the wall is pulsating and some of these crystals are coming out of the wall further and some of them are retracting. Um, and go, go ahead. ahead. I, I was just going to say and you also see continue to see um, individuals uh, appearing to work on some of those pods in the background. You can also see off in the corner Far, far away, off in the far southeast corner of this chamber, uh, a person standing in the corner, completely covered head to toe in, in a, uh, a cloak of some kind. Can't can't make out their features, their face. They're just they're just standing there, just obser observing. And um, you were going to say, Sabrina? I mean, Lathana, Excuse me. <laughs> um. I thought I would go, I guess, go over and look at the person in the corner. Okay. Um, as you w walk towards that person, um, you see the uh, uh, that one of the shifters is now looking at you and is looking past you and is just sort of croaks out in this low voice. Reaching out in a hand past you towards the mouth of the tunnel where Red is standing with the children. Does this shifter look like it's um, 
uh, constrained in any way? Like I can let it do? No, it's just standing there. It was just it wasn't doing anything with the other pods in the chamber. It was just standing there looking in the direction of the other um, shifters. But when you started to get close, it looked at you, glanced for a moment, and then looked towards red. Or looked beyond you, I should see, back where red was, or is. Uh, hey, Red, I think one of your shifter companions might be over here. And Red was probably like growling through this whole little book reading. Okay. And she's going to hand the book to Zito. Oh, okay. Iron Kobold, at least one thing she should read. It is not good. And I'll oh, go over well. to the shifter. Okay. Okay. Red, as you are going towards the shifter music, what are you doing? Uh oh, did we lose music? We may have lost music, guys. Oh. I see him, but I do not hear him. Did his headphones die? Music makes the world go around. Reuben, what are you doing? I'm just watching. You're just watching? Very carefully. Very carefully? Okay. It's I'm going to unlock your guys' tokens and see if that helps you guys move around. We'll see. Okay. Uh, right, so you get closer to that shifter, and you see now her face is still quite mutated, but it looks a lot like Kit. That's right funny. Lathana's is teleporting around the map, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. I'm closing it out for a minute because it's messing up my stuff. Um. Yeah, I would. I would drop down, and and grab Kit's face on the side, and and butt her head with mine. Kit, this one is. Sorry, she could not keep you safe. <laughs> she just starts sobbing in this croaky voice and buries her face um, in you. Um, I'll I'll uh, if, drop it out of your inventory into yours, Zeta, the journal. If it ever loads. Here, I'll do it. Okay. I don't know. Nope. I gotta put it at the party. I don't know. How do I give it to Zito? Uh, let me, uh... Well, I can do that. I can drop it in his inventory. Okay. Don't know if it just dropped in your inventory or not, Zito. I've just put two two yep I put two in your ha ha there we go oh man somebody's like making cookies or something I just hear bump 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 in the background and red um looking around you can see the other shifters which are still completely ignoring all of you and just moving and attempting to, to pull down and tug these uh, these pods off of these, um, carefully tugging the pods off from where they're festooned up. 
You can see that the chamber itself is not completely empty, but it looks like many are missing. There are big, big gaps between stalagmites and stalactites grown up from the ceiling to the floor. <clears throat> While still kind of like comforting Kit, Red would call back to Lithana. This one read in the text. The Jarn in those creatures we've fought. They are taking shifters. They've made a railway below the ground to connect far beyond the shadow marches. They wish to release the Overmind. They soon does not know how much time we have. They said that after they destroyed Hartham, that the mountain that walks will, do, will ruin everything, and they will break the seal. Well, then we should... Go ahead, Red. Sorry. They speak of the magic place that Eli took us to that even they will not be able to stop it. Red, as you're talking to Lathana, in the background behind her, you swear you can see a cat with wings plodding around in the in the dimly lit outskirts towards the walls. And as you try to focus on it, it's there and it's not there. And then suddenly it's walking from behind one of the columns yet again. You can see it. It's like this gray fluffy cat with wings. It's just plodding, weaving in an S pattern through the, crystal, the clusters of crystals on the ground. Hmm. It's a familiar sight. More, more to your companions less to you you only observed this once before when the entire group were taken um tricked um when Eli when a group of individuals from another plane of existence attempted to um capture eli redwood would point towards the the cat to lathana this one sees that strange cat and then from that cursed it, realm as soon as you say the word cat, it looks in your direction and you can see a shining something in the center of its forehead between its eyes. And then it's gone like that. And you just hear this like purring, this purring noise, overwhelming, vibrating in your ears, all of you. I need everyone to make a wisdom saving throw. Boom! Uh, oh yeah. At what? Oh, no. Wisest of them all. Oh, and uh, Jeremy, I was here, but I was talking to my girlfriend about ordering the kids a pizza because they hadn't had dinner yet. I apologize, I missed your message. No worries. I heard what everybody else is doing, and I was waiting for my turn to say something, and I set the headset down for one moment. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Red. Yeah? Uh, you are confused. Very confusing. You're very confused. There's magic afoot. Of course she is. And uh, I would just like to take this time to say F uh, fantasy grounds y'all are screwing up you don't have that condition already programmed <laughs> into the uh into this uh into fantasy grounds <clears throat> oh no that's we okay. can make a they can, can make a map that takes 32 gigabytes of graphics memory to run the right <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to write that you're confused. And uh, as you, as the rest of you are returning, you're hearing that weird purring noise. 
your your heads are throbbing and you look over all of you now clearly see the winged fluffy cat walking towards the individual standing in the southeastern corner far southeastern corner of this chamber it goes through the folds of its cloak and is gone inside of the cloak and then the cloak flies open and there's a humanoid standing there completely covered head to toe in writhing bugs or creatures i need all of you to roll initiative i'm glad you said that i was about to look at her man so we should definitely shoot that right <laughs> yeah lethana lethana has been like just let me shoot it oh gosh I... oh natural 20. hey well, i rolled twice sorry that's okay That sucks, Reuben. That thing was on 20 for a minute before it flipped to a 2. I know, right? You know, before we get started, though, I would like to say that I actually do like the RNG of the dice rolls. I didn't like them my first night because they did not go in my favor. But after watching everybody, it really does seem fairly random. Oh, is a good thing. Alright. I don't know if you guys have attempted to move your tokens where they were on the map. If you want to start, you can. And then I'll lock the tokens again. Yeah, I, to answer your question earlier about what I was doing is I was watching Zito intently because his crystals were making me nervous, but I figured Zito would know more about him, and I saw him studying them, so I just watched Zito. That's why I'm right behind Zito. Hey. I rolled, don't worry, I rolled the initiative for the children as well. Ah, <gasps> yes. They about to go weapon X. <laughs> Just remember, they're babies. <laughs> Baby weapon X's. I hope they have more hit points now. Can music change its name to Xavier and open up a school here after this? <laughs> <laughs> That's up to you. No, no, no. I want to. I want to make use of one of my backup characters. Semi school for gifted children. Semi <laughs> school for gifted children. Okay. Has everybody moved their tokens yet? Can I lock them? Yep. Yes. About you, Ruben. Are you back in the tunnel still? My character's like completely frozen on the map. I can't move my map. Okay. Where would you like him to be? Um, I guess put him next to Zito. Next to Zito? All right. Probably right in front of me. Okay. I can do that. And Zito, where's Kip at? Is he right next to you? And remember, Kip has a baby on him currently. That's right, he does. Oh, wait, what? Yeah, oh. Kip has that newborn we found riding on his back. Alright, well, if that's where everybody wants to be, I'll lock the tokens. Uh, can we put Kip back in the tunnel? I don't want him here. You don't want him there? No, I want him in the tunnel. Okay. Like behind music or like halfway into the tunnel? Or... 
Uh, behind music is fine. Okay. And can you put me in a complete square instead of like on the corner? I sure can. Uh, do you have a preference, sir? Uh, no, no preference. All right. I think, uh, Ruben, would you like me to put you in a complete square as well? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah, Fantasy Grounds Unity is, like, starting to piss me off, guys. Oh, no. You're not the first person I've heard say that. Well, it's like, uh, Derek said, I have this, like, ridiculous computer set up. And this should be working like butter. And it's not. Kind of, kind of sad. I know, same. I mean, so it's not the PC performance, it's just Unity. It's just Unity. What was his GPU again? A 2070? Yeah. Yeah, that thing ought to be just beast mode on this. <laughs> Alright, well, let's see. Did everybody roll initiative? Yes. Yeah, I rolled a two. You rolled oh, two. No. I'm going first, guys. <laughs> I don't think Kip rolled yet. Should I roll for him, Zito? Uh, no, don't even consider him in the fight. He's just going to sit back. Well, I still have to consider him because he's on the battlefield. <laughs> oh, like, don't... He's not going to make any like, combat actions. Okay, we'll just, so skip, just skip his turn. We'll, we'll just skip him when we get to his turn. How about that? Pay no attention to the Iron Lizard in the corner. Yeah. All right. And as soon as the map decides it wants to behave again, I can finish revealing everything. And then, let's see. Do I know? I know that the kids are not where you want them to be, Red. Necessarily, <laughs> I understand. But Lathana, it is your turn. Does she see the floating humanoid with the bugs all over it? <clears throat> I don't know. Can you see it? Uh, is it uh, Kit or Land? Or no, that's not Kit. Wait, is it? Oh, maybe? No, that's not Kit. Hold on. She looks around. <laughs> All right, let's let's look at your character. We'll see if you can actually see it, or if your view is obscured. <laughs> nope, you can see it. In the southwestern corner of the map, you see a, a humanoid. Oop, there it is. <laughs> um, she will point her. Um. Her arrow, she will cast Hunter's Mark. Okay. Bonus action. By the way, if you look on your action tab, at the top of your actions, you'll notice I added the Dread Ambusher power that you can put on yourself. That adds that, that D8 when you have that ability that you can roll to get the extra damage. Where is that again? Uh, it says Dread Ambusher under powers, right below your spell slots. Power. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. And All right. Have... Hey, look at that. Uh -huh. And she will point her vicious longbow and take a shot. Taking the shot. That's a hit. Even rolling out of five, you still hit it. How did that hit? <laughs> Come on. Come on. There we go.
It takes two more attacks. Am I targeting? Am I targeting it? Maybe. I'm... Yeah, you're targeting him. Okay, cool. He just took seventeen piercing magical damage from you, as you just catch him with an arrow. There's a burst of motion. Uh, as this violet light lights this creature up, you can see that it appears to be a humanoid. Two arms, two legs, a head, but it's completely coated in these writhing, wriggling organisms. This time she will sharpshoot and aim right for, I don't know, the head. <laughs> okay. And the arrow zips through the air spectacularly as I wait for it to show up. Mm. There we go. That is, yeah, it's also a hit. A 14 hits. Yes. Whatever these things are, they are definitely not armored. She takes her final shot, she blows on it. Come on, meet its mark. And she... <laughs> it's a no. That's a no? Yeah, it's a no. But miss. she can... Wait, but she can... You can take... Yeah, that's right, your special ability that just seems to recharge every single she time. Her. Speedily notches another arrow and points and shoots, and yay, Freddy Huron is working again. Okay, good. Yay. <laughs> That's also a hit. Ooh. Hey. And another 14 damage to the creature. You're just blasting big old wads of wriggling worms or earthworms or something off of its body in chunks. And she would end her plan. Yeah, sorry about that. Fantasy Grounds keeps like freezing and that's why it took so long. Okay. Now, uh, let's see. Do. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Daisy suddenly screams. Like you hear a shrill, tiny voice screaming as something is running at her from the shadows. As you as you turn and look Luthan in the direction where she is, this creature just scuttles right up to her from out of the shadows of a, apparently a tunnel that beyond that you didn't see before. And it kind of looks familiar. It looks a little bit like those uh, critters that you guys first encountered when you came to Hartham. And just to remind everybody what they look like, I will share an image of them. If you all remember these lovely little beauties. Well, it's adorable. Right? Ooh. That's what I thought. And, Lathan, you see this thing getting ready with its claws and its tail like it's getting ready to pounce on Daisy on its next turn. And on the Watcher's turn, let's see. Do do. Uh, it starts rushing in the direction of all of you. If it will let me. There we go. And
guess I will have to. Oh, come on. Basic Grounds is like, oh, you want to move this token, huh? Well, where do you want to move it? How about all the way over here? So you watch as this thing points at you, Lathana. And it begins uh, blasting something at you. Make a dexterity saving throw. I'm going to have Lathana add plus four to that. Okay. With my flash genius. Okay. Four, plus four or d d four. So the, I think it was just. Four. Oh, it was just plus four. <laughs> so a seventeen. Uh, so you watch as a worm flies out of the palm of this creature, right at you like an arrow, and nearly lands on you. It goes over your shoulder behind you, splatting against the column behind you. I do a Neo from the Matrix. <laughs> That's just like Thulsa Doom with them snakes. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, on Daisy's turn, uh, Daisy is going to bite the creature in front of it. In front of her, I should say. You just hear it just... <laughs> she makes this screeching uh, noise. Kind of sounds like that. And she is going to try to bite it. And probably not do much. But hey, you know what? At least she tried. Music, you're up on deck after a daisy. All right. I will be... Um casting Hex, targeting uh, Correspond Crawler 4 after seeing Daisy in danger. And then for my primary action, I will be casting Eldritch Blast. Well, she missed. <laughs> uh, so yes, it is your turn now. You see Daisy is face-to-face uh, -face with a horrifying creature. That's a hit with your Eldritch Blast. you deal eight necrotic force damage to the creature from your hex and a 15 also hits as this time you deal three force and necrotic damage to the creature now me out to Reuven Reuven we need to get these kids back behind us and I will move forward um, I will attempt to move forward bear with me okay In the meantime, back in that corner, Red, as you're looking at this creature, which is wearing this tattered gray cloak, as its arm is arch stretched in the direction of Lathana, you can now see strange quadruped creatures rushing from a tunnel beyond. Okay, I put my move in. I'm just waiting for it to move. Okay, I will approve said move. And it'll conga line over there. And is Red still confused? Uh, on your turn, you'll be able to save from it. Okay. I'm going to yell, kids, get behind me. And then I'll end my turn. All right. I'm just waiting for Fantasy Grounds to catch up to itself. As this 
as I said before, a little quadruped creature comes skittering out of the tunnel fast as all heck. Man, we may end up uh, switching back to fantasy grounds if this keeps up. Regular fantasy grounds. Well, don't worry, Jeremy. If we have to do that, we can always try this out again later after they get some of these bugs worked out. Yeah. I Honestly, I just don't think that it can handle having <laughs> more than a few people connected to it. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of sad. It's really annoying. Okay, here we go. So, Red, you see this little brain puppy come running out of the hall or the tunnel. You can see, actually, as it's running towards you, there seemed to be more movement in that tunnel. As it comes uh, rushing out from the tunnel, looking around for a juicy target. And it sees Zito and goes rushing towards him. The one with the biggest brain. And that'll be the end of its turn. I bet you 20 bucks it doesn't rush anywhere. You bet it doesn't rush anywhere? Yeah. It might crawl slowly over to Zeta, but I bet you it doesn't rush over there. <laughs> Let's see if it actually moves. <laughs> hit my arrow keys and all it's doing is moving the map around. It's hesitant. Zito yeah. intimidates it. Zito, you're intimidating the brain puppy. How do you feel about that? You should be ashamed of yourself. Yeah, I just want to be intimidated to Kip. There we go. Stops his turn there. And now another one comes running out of the tunnel. This one goes straight towards you, Red. And you said Kip's not doing anything, Zito? No. It He'll just be taking a dodge action on his turns. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yep, it is your turn, Zito. All right. So, seeing the inner luck devour in front of me, uh, Zito is going to cast poison spray on it. Okay. Good old poison spray. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And is it still freezing up on you? Yeah, it is. Okay, do you need me to target it for you? Uh, yeah, because it won't even let me drag and drop now. Hmm. Okay, well, I dragged and dropped it. You are now targeting it. Yeah, I should be able to just drop it onto the token, right? 
Yeah, you should be able to just drop your attack onto it. Um, no, it didn't work. You gotta, you can actually roll it on your action tab. And it'll do the save automatically. As this That's what I'm of, trying to do. It's not letting me do that. No. Oh. Well, I might have to manually do it. It's just you. not responsive enough. Poison spray. If I can find it. Hey, it did something. Ah, uh, the creature succeeded. It rolled a 15 plus 1. Well, that sucks. I'm sorry. Um, is that a cantrip? It is a cantrip. Okay. All right. Is that the end of your turn, or do you have more stuff to do? I guess uh, Zito's going to cast Sanctuary on himself, then. Okay. But that will be the end of my turn. All right. Don't cast it on the creature. Cast it on yourself. <laughs> I believe you can just drag the effect onto yourself. Uh, Indy yells out, Nya! and he is going to run up to defend his sister. Jeremy, don't kill those kids. If you didn't do it, you're a punk. <laughs> uh, I'm. I'm, I'm thinking of a, uh, a popular meme, a picture of a popular basketball player, and then the quote says, fuck those kids. Well, music and Reuben are currently trying to save the kids. I think Reuben's trying to help me anyway. So if they die, <laughs> technically it's our fault, not yours. Uh, so uh, Indy just uh, scuttles on all fours and runs, leaps, mouth open and grips the end of this creature's face. And you just hear it going, Nyah! And I guess I better drop the damage on him. Oh, I forgot to say that they shifted as a bonus action and gained five to Berea points. Both Indy and Daisy. They won't die instantly. But if they do, it will be less sad. Okay, that damage still didn't go, so we're going to try that again. There we go. He did a whole two damage to the crawler, guys. Red. Nice. All right. So the way that this works is at the start of each of your turns. Uh, nope. At the end of your turn, you will get to make a saving throw. So I need you to make a D10 roll for me to determine how, what you do while you're confused. A six. Let's see. Okay, you don't move or take any actions this turn. Now you can try to save out of that confusion. You are no longer confused, Red. E. So you'll be able to do stuff on your next turn. Reuben, it is your turn, sir. All right. So you see the familiar sight of an aberration at the feet of your kobold companion. Beyond that, you see another strange creature that looks like an aberration that currently has a toddler uh, attached to its face by the teeth. Can you move me um, right above the creature? Unity is being weird. 
No! Ha <laughs> ha! Like right next to uh Zito? No, oh sorry, I'm talking about the the kid, sorry. Um the the diagonal to the kid. Okay. So like diagonal to Daisy? So you'll get advantage? Uh uh yes. Alrighty. Alright, so let's move you diagonal to where Daisy is. It'll let me. And if you would like me to target him for you, since Fantasy Grounds yes, is being, yeah. being, being, it's all, literally kind, being all kinds of awesome. I'm just going to unlock the tokens so make it easier to drag your character sheet or your characters and then I'm going to do this. It sucks because I had a lot of high for you. Boom. Okay. Click on yourself, you'll be able to see again. I have... I have high hopes for this uh, program. Same. And I'm sure it'll be awesome when they finally like figure out everything. There you go. You're now targeting it. And I'm not knocking them. I see, unfortunately, it looks like Ashley, you got disconnected. Well, you know, I'm looking at my system resources right now, and it's using yeah. only like 60% of my computer with everything yeah. running. Yeah, I'm using half, not even half of my memory and everything. Yeah, so it's just got to be the program itself is slow. I wonder if it can be fixed. Well, keep in mind, it was working just fine when we played on the other map. I personally think that as much as they say it works on high-resolution images, it just doesn't work that well on this map. You might be right. That is a natural one. Dang. Um, uh, I'm going to use my inspiration. Can you use your inspiration? Go for it. The one that left me. I believe in you, Ruben. I believe in inspiration. Did you pray before you rolled? That's a hit. He prayed that time. He prayed, and it worked. Made the sign of the cross and everything. <laughs> and as you just turn this thing to salsa, bashing it the chain whips around the end of it, whacking into it, and just makes this splooting noise as the creature is very dead. And would you like to do uh, anything else? Uh, would you yes, like to do will, anything else? Uh, apologize to the children. I'm so sorry you saw that scene. Okay. Uh, what's your passive procession, Reuben? My passive is 19. Okay, uh, as you start to speak to the children and try to fuss over them, you hear a and as you turn around, you see another one of those creatures leaping at your face from out the tunnel, the uh, tunnel to the northwest. Fun. And that's the end of round one. On to round two. And Zito, it is your turn. What would you like to do on your turn, Zito? Uh, Zito's going to uh, place down his turret between himself and the wall that he's standing next to. Okay. Gonna make me look for that, huh? Okay. Awesome. 
I'm going to use it. I, I would suggest that you <laughs> find it and save it onto one of your tabs so that you can put it on the map. I tried doing that, but it doesn't save to my tab for some reason. Let's see if I can find it. Like It'll save the picture, but it won't save the actual token. Well, maybe I'll be a buddy and I'll save it on mine. How about that? You're a good buddy, Jeremy. Hmm. Well, first I have to find it before you call me a good buddy. But I'll do the damage for now while you look for it. Go for it. I'm just going to go looking for it. Yeah, I still can't find it. How about we just repurpose Kip and make it um, him the turret for now? Or I can find an NPC because it's programmed into my NPCs and I can take the image from there. How about that? Does that sound like a good idea? Sounds like a good idea. It's not the same, but there it is. If it'll ever show up. There we go. Okay. And that's the end of your turn? Uh, on Indy's turn, Indy is going to grab a hold of his sister, and they're just going to sit there shivering, just bawling. And then the Intellect Devourer, on its turn, is going to go after Azito. What do you think about that, Azito? Is it targeting me with an attack? It is. Does it need to make a save? It needs to make a wisdom saving throw. Alright. What's the DC on that? I believe it's 16. Now uh, 16? We'll find out here in a moment. It's frozen. It looks like it's frozen on a 14, so I don't think it's going to make it, but we'll find out here in a moment. Yeah, 14's gonna, not going to do it, so it's just going to sit there stupidly looking at you. And on the Correspond Crawler 3's turn, uh, it's going to unleash all of its attacks on you, Ruben. Uh, hang on. Jeremy can attack my turret instead of me. What's that? If it fails the Wisdom Saving Throw, it can choose a new target. So if you want, you can target my turret. Okay. Yeah, it's been a while since you've used the turret, so I, I apologize. I don't remember that ability. Well, in that case, it's going to, uh, hmm. yeah, why not? Uh, it's going to use its claws on your drone. Now, does it lose all of its attacks, or does it get to use all of its attacks? It can use all of its attacks. All right. Oh, can't I mean, you can keep attacking Zito if he wants to. He just needs to keep making wisdom saving throws. Okay. Well, it'll try its claw attack. So let's see if it actually hits. We 
need to make an NPC for your drone if we're going to keep using it. Otherwise, it's just going to be a pain in the butt trying to manually uh, figure out if it hits it or not. Uh, does a 18 hit? 18 does hit. Okay. That's going to take 7 slashing damage from the Devourer. It's going then going to attempt to get you with its second ability. Uh, it makes needs to make another saving throw, you said? Yes. Okay. Let's see if it actually rolls high this time. Nope, it rolled a five. So it's not going to do anything. I can still attack the drone. It can. Okay, well, in that case, uh, well, it can't. It's not going to do that because, actually. Hmm. Music. Yes. Make an intelligence saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on it, Chief. Uh, I think I did it. Okay, that's a six. All right, you take... Let's see. So you're going to take 2d10 psychic damage to the tune of what five psychic damage and then i need you but i don't have a brain that's right you don't have a brain <laughs> god damn it <laughs> and neither does kip so i can't attack him either uh okay well in that case nothing happens to you you can take the five damage off well yourself. I, I i'm i'm not immune to psychic damage though i still have something up there that counts yeah you don't you you Technically, you don't have a, you you do and you don't have a brain, so you don't have to do the other thing that I was gonna do. Okay. I was gonna make you throw roll three three d six, and if it equals or exceeds the uh, your intelligence score, then your score is reduced to zero. Ah. So technically, you don't have a brain, so I'm not gonna do that to you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I even have a song I sing about it. Or organically, you're not an organic creature, so you don't have a brain. Wow. Uh, that's how I'm ruling it in my campaign, damn it. <laughs> yeah, since 5e can't decide what they want to do with Warforged. It is true, though. I mean, they really don't. Nah, it's just gears and a Radeon 5000 series processor up there. Yeah. All right, let's see. So, looks like, uh, Ruben, you're getting claws and tails and bites thrown at your in your way as this creature with no eyes, very creepy looking, kind of looks like a tiny xenomorph, is trying to slash and claw and bite you. Uh, let's see, the first is a 15, which misses, and then it tries to slash at you, cha-cha, two times with its claws. All right, so the first one is also going to be a miss. The second one is going to be a miss. And then finally, the tail attack is going to be a miss. And Red, it's your turn. Just hitting got, the shield. Just hitting the shield. Just tonk, 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 tonk over and over again. Red will rage. Okay. Go for the intellect devour in front of her. Okay. Recklessly. Reckless. I like it. Do I have rage on me currently? I will turn it on for you. Boom. It is turned on. You may not have anything targeted. Nope, you do have something targeted. A 28 definitely hits your intellect devourer that's in front of you. The little brain puppy ran up towards you and didn't look like it really uh, knew what it was trying to do. You, you do 18 slashing magical d damage to it with Azure Edge, and you just watch as this... It slashes into it, nearly cleaving in half. 
Your second attack, 26, also hits. Sorry, I guess lagging a bit. That's okay. And you cut the creature in half and it dies before you, twitching as it does. Booyah! Would you like to do anything else? You can see in front of you, next to Kit, that strange creature pointing its arm, still pointing its arm right at Lathana. Yeah, I'm gonna go stand in front of it. Okay. And Lathana, you're on deck. What would you like to do on your turn? Lathana will look at the brain puppy trying to attack Zido. And she will... In the arrow? And move her hunter's mark over to it with her bonus action, and she will take a shot. Okay. E. That's a hit. And 28 definitely hits. Uh... Okay. That Actually, my you shouldn't be able to hit him. It's completely behind that column. Oh. I don't know if you were trying to hit the worm creature that was attacking you or the little brain puppy. Uh, she was trying to hit the brain puppy. Yeah, it's completely obscured. Okay. I didn't even see that there. <laughs> I just thought that was part of the ground. Um, That's okay. Well, then she didn't do that, I guess. Would you rather uh, transfer that damage to the other creature that you can see? To the watcher? Yes. Or, okay, sure. Sure, sure. <laughs> okay, I will manually uh, put that on it. And I'll take the eight damage that you threw on the Intellect Devourer off of it. No brain puppy damage. All right. Would you like me to take, uh, untarget the Intellect Devourer and target the other one? Uh, see if I There you go. I targeted it for you. All right. She will take one more shot, shot and she was sharp. And she gets, um, bad is helping her, so she feels extra accurate. Yes. Advantage on that attack. Yes. All right. That is a 10. It, it hits. That's 19 piercing wow. magical damage as another gob of of worms come off of it. You can see now an exposed torso, which is completely cleaved through as if it has been disintegrated by something gnawing on it. And you see more of those creatures dripping from the in interior of its chest cavity. You will move right in front of... Daisy and Indy, and she would end her turn. Okay. Music, it is your turn. Oh, yeah. Well, first things, I'd like to say that I transferred my hex from the creature that died from Reuven all the way over to the Watcher. All right. Now just allow me to target the Watcher. Okay. 
and for some reason I'm <laughs> targeting, targeting Kit. Kit. <laughs> Thanks, Fantasy Grand. Who is good looking out? Yeah, that that's obviously not who I was clicking on either. No. Let's see if I can help you. Yeah, there's this weird thing that every so often San Fantasy Grounds uh, unregisters the click. I think, and this could is just a theory. I think that some of these issues stem from the 3D effects in the program, causing trouble with like. I agree. Yeah. All right, that's a hit. Your Eldritch Blast. Whack. Impacts the creature, dealing eight force and necrotic damage to it. Your second attack also hits. And your Eldritch Blast arcs across and blasts into the creature, and it just starts falling apart immediately. Its left arm drips off, bugs squirming, dying. And you just watch as this fluffy gray cat with wings flies up in the air, seemingly out of its body. And it said, and it just says, clear as day in a deep throaty voice. Good job. And then evaporates. Take that, you pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is that the end of your turn? I will transfer my hex now over to the brain creature pestering Zeta. Okay. And <clears throat> impacting its wisdom. <laughs> there are children here. And Ruben. children, get over here behind me and uh, Zeta, quick. Ruin, it's your turn. I'm gonna whack this creature. Whack a mole. Go for it. See if it let me target it. Oh, it did! Hey, it's amazing. That's a hit, and you deal fourteen psychic bludgeoning radiant damage to the creature. Yeah, I had to spell it all out. There's a ton of different types of damage that I, I can do. Okay. And Sexy. I will end my turn. That's the end of your turn? Yes, sir. Okay. On the next round of combat is Red's turn. Red, the worm worm creature is gone. A strange kitty cat that flies, just that you've seen only once before, said something and then flew off and evaporated into thin air. Dang. Right. Three. All right, so I'm gonna move up to the Mind Flayer by Zito. Okay. And recklessly attack with as a wrench. Thinking. It's definitely thinking. I see it thinking. A 31 definitely hits. Nice. And then I'm gonna move back. So I have to find it. Okay. Wagon again. <clears throat> Thinking And I will Pearl Azaredge at the poor spawn crawler by Reuben. 
All right. And you... That's a 30, it totally hits. And Azure Edge flips end over end, going over Daisy and Indy's heads, going past Reuven doing an S pattern, and then turning the correspond crawler into salsa chunks all over the crystalline floor around it. And you are all out of combat. I like that feature. I was going to say, I think you may have Dope. used up all your uses of that. Uh, I have one more. Yeah. There's three. That was my second one. But they come Can I give her my all. inspiration so she can get two more? No, I'm sorry. That's not how that works. <laughs> she, she needs to take a rest to get that back, I, I believe. Actually, they come back at dawn. Ooh. Well, in that case, you don't. Yeah. Use those wisely. What time of day is it? Uh, well, right now, you're not entirely sure the exact time, um, but it's probably get edging up closer to 9.15 a.m. You sure it's not around 5.45 of the morning? No, I'm <laughs> sorry. The sun is starting I tried to... Red. Is, the sun is rising above, up top. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, Robert. <laughs> During the uh, the fight, um, those shifter that were uh, working on all of those um, pods just continued to work. Didn't pay any of you, no, never mind. Um, Kit has now wandered over to the children and is gathering up in her arms. What are the shifters doing with the crystals? Uh, they're not messing with the crystals. They're gathering pods with humanoids in them down. Like, uh, it looks like they're getting ready to carry one off right now as we speak. I think we should probably follow them because we're probably taking that pod to where we need to go. If what I read, uh, read about in the journal is true, we don't have much time. We need to hurry. Oh, let's get going. And Zito's gonna start walking or following the shifters. Okay. Uh, they are currently heading towards, let's see, doo, doo, doo. Uh, it looks like they're getting ready to go back the way that all you all came from, actually. And they start heading back towards that chamber that had the mud flow, the river, that was being fed from that small fall of uh, waterfall of mud coming out of the ceiling. And, so what uh, are they doing? They're just tossing it into the, the mud river? Uh, it looks like they, if you watch them, you watch as they, they walk over to the edge and they toss it into the river flow. They just watch them just do the, uh, a quick heave one, two, and then on three they let it go and it falls into the mud flow and begins traveling down the, the little mud river through the hole in the wall and disappears. And you said uh, last time that uh, there's a there's a passageway that follows the uh, mud river. Um, 
there's a passageway that goes back in that chamber that's uh, up on the ledge where you guys cl climbed up. Um, there's a passageway that heads to the north. And in the chamber that you're in, uh, intellect devourers came from a passageway to the east, right above where that uh, person wearing the, uh, the cloak was standing. And then there is a passageway that uh, seems to go towards the northwest. And it looks like it, it slopes downward a bit to where you no longer see where the tunnel leads from your position. You just see the top of the tunnel. And there is a bit of a creeping, <clears throat> excuse me, mist that is coming out of that tunnel and wafting in and then dissipating as it enters into this chamber coming from the northeastern or northwestern uh, tunnel. And Red, you you shared the book with uh, Zito, did you not? Yeah. Did you share it with everyone else or just him? I gave him the book, and then I told Lathana about the gist of it. And if you guys want, I can share the text from the journal in the vo in the chat. Yeah, it might be best because it's going to take me forever to get Fantasy Grounds to load and scroll through my inventory. Sure. To find it. I can absolutely do that. Boom. Oh, it didn't work. Try that again. Boom. There you go. It's a wordy one. There's a lot to it. And if you would like, I will read it to you. Or you can just read it at your leisure. And we'll continue. I think you should read it for the listeners. We have listeners. All right. Oh, it'd be nice if we did. <laughs> uh, this tome. We might one day. This tome details my personal study of seromorphosis, a bodily change that occurred when an illithid tadpole reached maturity and was inserted into the brain of another being, usually a human. The tadpole eats away at the victim's brain matter and essentially replaces the brain, erasing all of the subject's personality and memory, but leaving the physical body alive and under the tadpole's control. After this, morphological transformations occurred, and after a week, a new illithid is created. Useful to the players, no doubt, in repopulating their numbers, but utterly useless as an application in making my mutant children more obedient. And it takes far too long. Now as for the royal jelly I've acquired from the flares in the deep wood, priceless. Not only does it addle the mind of even the most hearty individual, immersion in the ferro fluid promotes genetic mutation. In just six months time I have enhanced so many of my churning chaos brethren that I've had to expand and move my operations to the facility in the deep wood. There, I can continue to enhance the remaining shifter test subjects captured from the village. Brother Kurzark and his master have promised me a greater variety of subjects from beyond the Shadow Marches. With the use of the secret lightning railway they have constructed in the cavern, we no longer need to rely on the Azure Sky to move materials and personnel throughout the region. Once the railway is expanded beyond the forest, we can... Blessings from the Overmind. The Blessed Key Yarn will unlock the Summoned Elemental Node and allow Jabal al mat to enter this realm from Kithri. The mountain that walks will merge with and absorb the body of the fallen Titan and then destroy this pitiful village. 
After Hartham's reckoning, we shall return to the Deepwood facility beneath the Dreamer's pylon and finally break the Gatekeeper's seal. I feel absolutely giddy just putting this to paper. I cannot wait to see the faces of those fools at Arcadix and the Tower of the Twelve when they realize it is far too late. Glory to the Overmind. Glory to the voice of Elash Tavar. Glory to the Opener. Let the Age of Worms begin. And then there, on the very last entry, there is a top-down uh, overland drawing of a gargantuan orb-like structure that seems to be sunken partially into a massive crater surrounded by a forest. And there is a text written beneath the drawing in that strange pictographic language that is um, written on technical um, uh, displays and uh, examples of various types of uh, diagrams and technical readouts and of course the occasional description of an autopsy or a dissection do any of you speak deep speech Well, yeah, nobody understood that. In fact, neither did I Fantasy Grounds. A... Neither did Fantasy Grounds because I... it didn't. It just came up as a bunch of uh, jumbled, garbled mess. I actually have a language choice that I never picked, but I don't think music would have picked up deep speech. Okay. All right, so after absorbing that information and realizing that you have multiple branching pathways here and now have collected a, a small group of uh, very um, pitiful looking sh shifters, what would you all like to do? The other shifters, by the way, the, the, dr uh, the almost drone-like are just ignoring you and they're continuing to go about their business, dropping pods into the mud river in the next room. I see we take the path that follows the river. Uh, the one that I agree. The one that's up above and uh, goes to the uh, the north. Yes. Okay. I also trust Zito's judgment. My question to I'm you. I'm here then, to follow you. Is what do you wish to do with your growing uh, <laughs> family? I would really like to send them back to the surface if possible. I don't surface think that's is possible dangerous. Right now. Can we put them in the portable hole? They would certainly die. Uh, no, they would suffocate. Uh. Well, we can either we send can, them back uh, up behind us or they can come with us. Can your mechanical lizard carry them? I mean, of course he can carry them. He can carry the smaller ones, but he, unfortunately he couldn't carry Kit. Could we send the mechanical lizard back to the surface with the smaller ones and have Kit go with them and tell them to find a place to hide? I remember we took a a mud river down here, right? So I'll have to find a way out. We would waste a lot of time trying to find a way out. So, is a kid able to walk on her own? Yeah, she was able to, you know, clamber over towards the children. She's still holding them both hip to hip, one in each arm. Uh, 
And you, well, can see, you can see that she has a scorpion tail now. Nice. I found my new assistant. Coming out from somewhere on her lower back and curling up from a tattered clothing she's wearing. And she's just scratching the side of her head um, with the side of the tail. Not the stinger part, as that would be dumb. Unless she's immune to her own poison. Truth. I think she'll make a great assistant for music. She has uh she has a potential job in the future. <laughs> it is sad what they are doing to these shifters. It is, but I think we should make the best of it. Lathana. Yes. You only have two arrows left. Yes. Would you like to try to gather some of your arrows that you've been using? There's a few around this chamber. Roll a d10. Oh boy. Okay, you're able to get six arrows back. I will adjust that for you. The rest of them are too far too damaged that you can do anything with them at the moment, unfortunately. So after a while, um, you all watch as Kit now, with the children in her hands, goes up to you, Red, reaches up, grabs the back of your head, and touches her forehead to your forehead and purrs and and she looks to you Red, and she says secret place I'll, I'll, I'll take them and you watch as she she goes around um, to the back of the chamber and you watch as she just passes through the back of the wall, back where that cloaked individual was, she passes through the wall with the children. Like it's intangible. I guess that's the way to go. And then she pokes her head out and looks and looks to you, Red, and just and nods her head at you and try attempts to smile at you. And it makes a motion as if to say, go, go. And I'm going to take this one, too. <laughs> okay. And Zeta will give him the... What, what did Red name the little squid creature? I think uh, uh, Music named it. <laughs> yeah. Or what did Music name him? Carcanos. Yep. Carcanos. Here, take that one, too. Okay. So you're able to hand off the very, very small premature uh, tr creature uh, to um, an already arms loaded kit. She looks at you just sort of confused and then gracious graciously accepts Karkinos from you and then disappears through the wall. Gone. He eats apples. Alright, now that we're not dealing with any children. Uh, it's I missed them already. Going. I can bring them back. Get back over here! No, I think my companions will be upset. Alright, so you're following the uh, passageway back to the mud, mud chamber and then going north? Yes. Okay, what is the group's uh, for marching formation? Head toward the front. Reuven behind red. I guess I'll be behind Reuven. All right. The hot Sounds like I'm behind up the rear. Music at the rear. Yep, that's how it's sounding. <laughs> You stay behind and get one last look at this child. Oh. No, they're gone already. No, yeah. it's because he can swear in secret. And what about Kip? Where's Kip at? Uh, Kip's beside me. 
Okay. We have to remember, I mean, this is Music's first son leaving and his new assistant, Kit, leaving. So this is a trying time for him. All right. So you're heading back out of the Crystal Cavern, back towards the mud flow. Once again, roaring, absolutely roaring in your ears, echoing in the chamber. Um, at this point, uh, the the shifters, the remaining shifters, just kind of like just sort of busily bustling and pushing past you with the crystal pods as you all assemble back out where you came into the chamber and then begin to head north. The tunnel curves around a bit, um, staying about five feet wide throughout the most, and then it begins to um, curve back to the north after going east a bit. And it opens up into a smooth stone bridge that are flanked on either side of the bridge by boulders. And it's about five feet wide. There's no railings and seems to span a wide cavern. And you can all hear this weird um, clicking and clacking noise. There's also a thick fog that absolutely blankets the expanse all around you along this expanse like it just hovers just below the stone bridge well shall we continue uh, hold on tight everyone Zito's going to give someone a rope to hold on to after tying one end to himself. Rattle, where it'll grab the other end. Now, if we fall, Red, make sure you fall on the other side. So you're going to tie a rope to him? Yeah, Red's, uh, Zito's tying a rope to himself. Okay. You're tying a rope to yourself and tying it to Red? Uh, uh, we can tie it together if she hold. wants, but... Yeah, Red just got a hold of it. Okay. Um, you're just using, like, a length of rope that's in your pack, like a 50-foot-long length? Yes. Okay. And you're right, just going after you're, that. Zito's gonna. <laughs> Zito, you're walking, uh, going across without the group by yourself. Yeah, but if he falls, you know, Red can pull him back up. So it's true. All right. Uh, so as you were, you get to about the halfway point on the bridge, and there's this weird, whispery, clacking noise that seems to be coming and filling this entire chamber all around all of you. Um, there's this stone grinding on stone noise, and from the bridge across from you, this stone that's sitting on the bridge stands up. And then the stone that is standing next to red stands up. Should we shoot him? Well, I would like you all to roll initiative. <laughs> I was just checking. Holy. Let me just put you on the middle of the bridge, you know. That's not the middle of the bridge.
I like how everybody was like, yeah, Zito, go across the bridge. Well, I mean, I wasn't going to say no. Also, Zito, is your little drone gone? Or, like, did it disappear? Uh, no, it sticks around for an hour. Okay. Alright, let's see. Lead... Music. Lathana. I think Lathana's going to go next. He's a map is just not. Ugh. Guys, I love Fantasy Grounds Unity. I really do for the stuff it does, but holy crap, does it slow everything down. Yup. And what was Kip doing? Is he following you on the bridge? Without a rope? No. No? No, we'll have him with the rest of the party. Okay. You want him at the rear or just mixed in with them? I just mixed in with them. It's fine. Okay. And then what about your Pokeball? Is that coming with you? No. No? No, oh, we'll, oh, we'll just have it uh, beside Kip. Okay. Okay. All right, Lathana, it's your turn. So, let's see. So, Lathana, you see just ahead, you looking around the corner, you can see uh, that there was a rock right next to this uh, where Red was standing. Red was standing with her back to her, and now a rock is starting to stand up and then unfurl its arms and legs. And it looks like... Let me just pull it out so you can see. It looks like a Diaz. Looks like a little rock man. And he wants to rock you like a hurricane. Ooh. Lithana will ambush the creature and send a vicious arrow its way. Okay. That's a hit. A 23 definitely hits. And that clacking noise is like intensifying, by the way. <laughs> The, the sound that is echoing, you can hear it. Uh, not as much as Red and Zito can hear it, but it's this clacking noise is, is just like... And it's just vibrating off of the... The sound vibrates off of the edges of the, the cavern walls from within that chamber beyond. 
Mm. As you deal ten, now, red is, 10 damage to the creature. Red is right next to it, right? Yes, so technically you have advantage. Cool. Scary Unf cat. Unfortunately, that is a miss. Mm. A 12 she does would... not connect its thick hide. She would try one more time. Hey. So much damage. <laughs> and she will end her turn there and say, Hey, heads up, look at the rock. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Red, this uh, creature just suddenly tries to whack you from behind you. This, uh, this, this stone creature. And you watch as this thing just ri rinse, reaches its, its stubby arms up rears back and whack and manages to hit you with a 22 uh, I believe your rage is that still going because it shouldn't be um yeah a minute I think would have pa passed yeah so instead of 5 you will take 11 so let me adjust that and turn your rage off for you So instead, you're down 16 hit points as you are slammed in the back by this creature. And it is now your turn. All right. This thing just very rudely, like, tried to scratch your back and then hit you. For punk. Oh, I'm gonna recklessly attack with Azeridge. That's a hit. That's an 11 damage slashing into you. The, your axe is hitting the edge of its stony skin and sparks are coming off of it as it does. And that's also a hit. As you deal another 10 slashing magical damage to the creature. I should say, are you still holding on to the rope? Because you shouldn't have, <laughs> you shouldn't be rolling two-handed attacks uh, on damage if you are. Oh, how do I? Yeah, I'd have to change that. No um, worries. Just yeah, just keep that go, uh, going forward. Don't do the uh, the D10 damage type. I don't think. Uh, I think it switches to what a D8. Yeah. Okay. Because right, so I, I assume just... that you're holding on to the rope with one hand and you're slashing with the other. Yeah. Uh, I don't it's think. Like, like a rope in my teeth. Yeah. Doesn't require two hands, so you can swing it with one hand. Okay. Okay. Um, and that's it for me. All right, music. It's your turn, sir. Okay, I need to move forward so I can see everybody true you're just hearing uh some sort of ruckus going on on the bridge while well, you heard that there's a bridge i want to try to move there if possible okay let's see i can see gallop door one All right, I've got him targeted, and I'm going to cast Tasha's Hideous Laughter on him. Okay, I've never seen a rock laugh, but this will be interesting. Well, let's see what happens. Okay. Uh, it fails, rolls an eight. It falls to the ground incapacitated laughing, and it is unable to stand up. It gets a save on the end of its rounds, and every time it takes damage. Okay, I believe there's an effect you can drop on it, correct? 
Uh, let me see here. If not, Looking just spells. Yeah, if not, just remind me. Got it. There we go. So this thing just falls backwards, and it's just like... <laughs> slow, throaty... It, it kind of sounds like uh, when someone like talks through a toilet paper roll. I'm going to slap Reuben on the chest and point at it and say, you don't see that every day. And now in my turn. Okay. Zeto, it's your turn. You can see that there is... Uh, on the other end of the bridge, you can see another one of those creatures... Uh, Zito looks back towards Red and see that that is getting a little crowded. Uh, so it looks like Zito doesn't have much choice. He is going to um, head closer towards the other side of the bridge. Okay. I'll put him right in front of this creature. Okay. Actually, I'll go as far as the rope will allow me to. Um, well, it will... Uh, assuming it's a 50-foot long rope. Yeah, so I gotta figure out So you still got... You still far... have some slack. You got about 10 foot of slack. Roughly. Alright. And Zito will cast what is it a uh, thunderclap? Okay. You want me to put you in front of the other creature on the other side of the bridge? Yes, please. There you go. And I don't know if you guys can see it, but the mist is animated. It succeeds. All right, and then as a bonus action, I'm going to cast Sanctuary on myself again. Okay. Uh, it and will... I think that uh, the effect is still up. So yeah, yep. I'll just keep it like that. Okay. On the creature's turn, it is going to... Let's see... Yeah, uh, he's going to attempt to grapple you. So he's going to, let's see, that would be strength versus your um, dex. He's not attacking you. He's trying to pick you up, scoop you up. Right. So however however, so sanctu a... however, sanctuary works, does it mean an attack action or a hostile action? Um, anything that will cause damage. So this one. Oh, work. he's definitely gonna do damage. So we'll do a, a wisdom save like, on no, it. No, I mean like sanctuary wouldn't protect me from it. Oh no. Oh well, in that case, let's see. Uh, no. Let me okay, let me roll his check. Is it's it's a grapple check. He's trying to grab you. Right, so am I just making a dexterity check, or is it dexterity save? Actually, it doesn't matter. It's just a plus three, anyways. All right. If you look in the in the dice chat, I did a uh, he rolled a nineteen, so he grabs you, and he is lifting you up over his head, getting ready to looks like to throw you on his next turn, and he starts carrying you to the middle of the bridge. I wonder if I can just grab both of you. Yeah, just do that. Hey, it worked. Yeah, he carries you to about the halfway point of the bridge and he's dangling you over the edge. And... That's his turn. Reuben, it's your turn. 
Reuven, um, can I move up in front of that rock man above him? Is there room? There's a, he's uh, unfortunately blocking your 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 egress. Uh, you you in fact have two friends and an enemy blocking your way onto the bridge. So unfortunately, you can't okay, yeah. you can't get onto the bridge. Unfortunately, you got too many too many bodies in, uh, in your path. Like you could pass through uh, a space containing a companion as long as you don't end on their space, but you can't pass through an enemy space. All right. Um. Well, then I will. Can I see the the rock dude? Hmm. I would say that he is partially obscured, but you can see him. You can see. Well, you can partially see. Partially obscured. Don't matter see, what spells. Bro, mm, you can see the first guy. You cannot see the one that's on the bridge. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you got too many people blocking your view. Toll the dead. <laughs> okay, go for it. After he rolls his damage, I need a wisdom save from that creature also. Okay. I think it targeted him. You think so? Oh, it targeted Ruv. All right, you might need to untarget some people. Let's take Targets a look. Ruben Looks like you're... On, uh, Zito. Yeah. <laughs> you're targeting everyone. Okay, let's uh, take all those off. And we will target... The Gallop Doer. There you go. Sorry about that. That's okay. Oh, it rolled twice. So the hmm. first one. We'll take the first he's one. He's also targeting the wrong one. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's targeting the one on the bridge holding Zito up. Is he? Oh, pretty, yeah. Pretty, I'm pretty he sure he is. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Gallop Doer 1 is the one I'm incapacitated. Yeah, yeah, you you uh, are targeting the wrong one. So I will take the first one, which is a failure, even though it is the wrong creature. I'll say that Galador number one failed. But you still have to roll it on him in order to do what you're trying to do. So go ahead. Let's, let's untarget that one and target the correct one. All right. Do you want me to roll again? No, yeah, because your damage uh, is based off of the spell. No, just roll for damage. Yeah, just uh, just untarget and and uh, roll for damage, and we can drop it manually. Seventeen radiant. Okay. Nice. I got the radiant one on. I will drop that onto him. And he took seventeen. Yeah, you need to change the damage type, sir. It says necrotic. Yeah, I just did. I just typed it in. Okay. It should actually be in there already. Under the uh, the spells action tab. It gives you two options. One for necrotic, one for radiant, I think. But I could be wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. It's, it's been a while that. since I used Toll of the Dead. Because the, spe well, the, no, no, the spell only does necrotic, but because of who I am is the reason why I'm saying it does radiant. Gotcha. Remember, I can change all necrotic to radiant. That's true. So that's the reason why it's radiant and it's not in the programmed in. Okay. Bend it to your will, Derek. <laughs> goody goody. I all don't right. use necrotic. All right. Wisdom save, Jeremy. Wisdom save. Okay. That is a f six. <laughs> It's not going to be my 17. He is still laughing uncontrollably. Okay. <laughs> it, it sounds like Jabba the Hutt. Oh, oh, oh. Tickle's done it. It's Battle Cam's turn. We didn't roll Kip's... Uh... <laughs> we didn't roll Kip's... Uh... Unfortunately, so... We'll just say it's his turn. He'll say that he had a 3 for initiative. But what does Kip do on his turn? Is he going to attack the creature that's prone? Uh, no, I didn't give him any orders, so he's just going to defend himself, so... Okay. Well, in that case, we'll proceed to the next round and watch this uh, hilarious uh, Zito get thrown over... Uh... Oh, Zito, it's your turn. 
Would you like to attempt an escape check? Uh, no. Zeo is just going to cast Misty Step. Okay. And he'll go to the other bridge. Other side of the bridge? Okay. Yeah, so where, where he was uh, picked up and dragged from. Okay. And as my action, I'm going to cast. Mm. Oh, the stone creature is just stupidly looking at his hands and now is slowly turning to look in your direction as you appear, apparate behind him. I would say you probably are no longer holding that rope, so it falls dangling down off of the bridge. Still oh, no, Zeta! No, right, not still holding it? Red's holding the other end, so her end is in her hand, but the other end is down onto the ground or, or down on onto wherever this uh, this mist leads to. Okay, so just my end fell. Um, yep. Yeah, I'm gonna cast a uh, magic missile. Okay, go for it. I'm gonna cast at second level. All right. Oh, what'd you say there, Reuben? Can't cast two spells in a round? That's true. Technically, you, you, you can trip. Uh, you, yeah, it has to be a can trip. Yeah, I forgot about that. I, um, yeah, I'll, I'll just cast, uh, what is it, a uh, firebolt instead. Okay. Well, let me take the damage off. Of Sorry, the you know. <laughs> All right. No, that was my there fault. You go. No yep. worries. Yeah, you're not a sorcerer, buddy. <laughs> That's where the sorcerers come in handy. Yeah. Okay, that's definitely nice. <laughs> Almost a crit. That's 19 fire damage as Zito spins around after apparating, turning to mist, and then turning to mist once again on the other side of the bridge and letting loose his fire bolt. Damn, that was better than the magic missile. That was. Four points higher damage. And music, it is your turn. Once again, you see this cackling stone creature laying on the ground. Kip is still in front of you, annoyingly so. Well, seeing that rope uh, fall slack, music yelled, Zito! And he's going to push his way past Kip so that Kip's behind him and he's in front. Um, yeah, I mean, you can exchange places with Kip if you want. Yes. Okay. All right, let me just move Kip out of the way. Y'all are all crunched up on one another. You're now standing, looming over the Gallop Door. Ruben, I'm gonna move you back slightly so that you're not on top of Kip. But what if I wanted a mount? I'm afraid he's not big enough for that. <laughs> Come on, get up! <laughs> and very uncharacteristically for music, I will attack with my rapier. Okay. I meant to do that just once. <laughs> well, you're attacking with advantage. 
so it's okay. Oh, okay. That's it, why. It's okay. prone, so you're and you're attacking with a melee attack, so the creature is being hit with advantage. Gotcha. Okay, good. I thought I did that by accident. No worries. As you pokey pokey the creature, dealing nine piercing magical damage to it. All right, wisdom save from the creature, please. Wisdom save. All right. See if he is still laughing his stones off. Does a 16 do it? It does not. Oh, he's still down on the ground. Ho, 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 ho. It's hilarious. Never oh. gets old. All right. Kip's still defending himself, doing nothing. Red is your turn. Unless you have something else you wish to do, Mizuk. Uh, no, I'll end my turn. Okay. Red will go for the... She'll go ham. On the one that was messing with her again. Uh, the one that is raging. currently laughing. It's so weird. It doesn't have eyes. It just has empty sockets and this weird Jabba the Hutt-like mouth. Gross. And that's a hit, actually. Yeah, that is definitely a hit. as you deal 11 slashing magical damage to the creature. And it yeah. sucks when you can't hit with two hands, right? I mean, technically, the rope, you don't have to hold on to the rope. You can let go of it. At 30 hits. Right that Zito is, would be safe if she lets go. That's and you anyway. crush the creature's head stomping it in as it is laughing and I'll start heading towards the one in the middle okay okay and that's it okay And on the Gallop Durs turn, turns around, and yes, it's going to do a suplex on red. Red, the, the creature now turned, uh, it was looking in the direction of red, it's, or of Zito, it's burnt in places, and it's stony visage. It turns around and tries to throw a haymaker at you. But it misses. And that's the end of its turn. Lathana, it is your turn. You can see that there's no longer... I can hear myself in the background. Sexy, right? Not, it's just like a very tenuous, like an old radio timey style. Even better. So you no longer see red in front of you from where you're standing. Uh, the stone creature is no longer moving, Lathana. What would you like to do? I'm um, seeing that her friends are going near the bridge. She would follow. Okay. Uh, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me. Do some acrobatics. Just jump over everybody. <laughs> And she will take aim at the creature now fighting red. Yes, okay. And she will sharpshoot with advantage, which is Amazing. Oof, that is a amazing. miss, unfortunately. We, even with advantage, I am so sorry. But she quickly recovers herself and shoots again. Okay. 
That is a hit, though. 20 definitely hits as your arrow thunks into its stony hide, only doing 17 piercing magical damage. I would like to mention that that was a one she rolled, plus 16. <laughs> nice. It's almost as broken as my save, DC. <laughs> <laughs> she will uh, close one eye and attempt to aim right for, I don't know, it's stony eyes? Does it have those? That should be an advantage. Shoot. Well, Should I roll, roll again or not? Yeah, I just roll again. That's a hit, and 19 definitely hits. Alright. This time you do 11 piercing magical damage to the creature. Uh, watch out, Red. Watch your back. And uh, I will end my turn. All right, Reuven, you are up, sir. The first stone creature is gone. It's down. Since uh, the Thana decided to rush up there, and I can't really get past them again. No, you can. You can. Skip. You just can't end your turn in their space. Oh, I can. Yeah. Yeah. Move. Move up in front of me so you can see. Um, well, before I move, I will look at Kip. Okay. Hey, buddy, you look kind of hurt. He is hurt. He will be hurt until he gets some healing. But I don't know if your healing spells work on him. That's, uh... They work on me. That's up to Zito, I think. And usually for my constructs, mending will heal them, but it doesn't say anything about that in uh, the ability. So, oh, you know what? I'll, I'll leave that up to you, Jeremy. I, I will allow it. Magic is weird. Okay. Magic would heal me. It should heal Kip too. Yeah, yeah, but you're also you're you're both. There's sort of shades of the same type of creature. He's a construct, just less intelligent. Yeah, he's like my dumb cousin. <laughs> I kept plenty of intelligent. <laughs> Probably more intelligent than me. Yep, secretly is a wizard. And then move me up uh, 30 feet onto the bridge, please. I got you. You want to be right here? Probably right behind red. I can't get that far. Not yet. Yes, I'll be right there. Thank you. All right. With the battle camera. With the battle camera. I made it small intentionally. And it's your turn again, Reuben. Holy crap. <laughs> Whoa. Man, I'm just rolling that great. How big is this bridge? Can I... Uh... It's about five feet wide. It's, it's pretty uh, precarious. And it's not completely five feet all the way across. There are areas where it's a little wider and a little more narrow. So, oh, okay. Oh, I know what I'm doing. Is it dark in here? Yeah, it's dimly lit. There's still like, uh, it's like there's a, a glow emanating from the walls. But in this chamber, because of how vast this chamber is and the, the space between the walls, it's a bit darker. Dimly lit works fine, just fine. I will fly all the way around and land behind the creature. Okay. I mean, a, a deposit you behind yes, it? Yes, please. Yes, please. For some reason, like, I can click, click on my character, but then once I click on it, it freezes the whole map. But if I don't click on my character, the map works kind of fine. I can move I was going to say, you, you've got a pretty good computer, too. It should... That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> uh, it's, it has to be Unity. Yeah. Here comes the whack. Here comes the whack. Bring in the pain. And and I can't really target him. And please, <laughs> your gracious DM. Gracious DM, pretty please get me a target. There you go.
And uh, that's a critical hit. Told you nice. the whack. Uh, that's a whopping thirty damage as you whack strike the creature. I should mention that you should have been rolling at advantage. Oh, okay. Yeah. That works too. Uh, I mean, I can't get better than natural twenty. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the end of your turn? Yeah, it's just the end of my turn. Okay, Lathana, you're up. Well, after seeing that, she's like, is that thing still alive? Um, Red, you let go of the rope, right? No. You did not? You still have it in your hand? Yeah. Okay, good to know. Well, Lithana notches her last arrow. Oh, shit. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Lithana, you need some arrows. I do. And she will close one eye, blow on the arrow, and attempt to hit. That's a hit. 18 definitely hits. A sharp shoot. That Actually, you should have another. Swap. You should have another bundle of arrows. I should. You have two. You so we'll we'll reset you to, to back to twenty here, because you should have another bundle. Now you'll have to go into your pack to get it. But I'll yeah, go I think I, because I had the repeating longbow. I uh, put them away. <laughs> Uh, but you were able to so. kill, you slay the Gelabdor, catching it in it, the side of its head. There's a meaty thunking noise. This uh, sound of your arrow tip hitting the stone. This thwack. And it is dead. And you are all out of combat. Zeta, you okay over there? And Red. Before anything else happens, Red, make a strength uh, check. Three twenty. Something's pulling on the rope. I'll start. I'll start pulling it up. You're pulling it up? Mm hmm. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. How much can you lift? Um. Dun, 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 dun. Hey, how much can you lift, bro? Um, I don't know. Let's see. It should be in your on on your inventory at the bottom. And oh. I will I will award you all. I can lift uh, nine hundred. You can lift six hundred pounds. Okay, yeah. something very heavy is holding onto your rope. Oh. And it's straight down from where you are on the bridge. Do we notice this? Uh, at this point, you would notice that Red is struggling. She was holding with one hand at first, and now she's gripped the rope with the other hand and is holding and pulling something up. You okay there, Red? And as you... This one has caught something. Are, are you going to continue to hold on to the rope? Yeah. Okay, what do you want to do? Um... I'm if I see her struggle at all, I'm throwing a dagger at the rope. You're tossing a dagger at the rope? If I see her struggling like it's pulling back in the other way, if I see her start to lose, uh, that dagger's being tossed. I've got it ready. It doesn't look like it's she's struggling in terms of like um, something resisting. It's more she's flexing her muscles, holding on to it. Like whatever is at the other end of it uh, seems to be heavy. Reuben, help her. 
I believe you should let go of that rope. Lithana goes rope, over and helps her. Brad would, would look at the rope. Look up at Reuven. This one will trust Eli's word. Are you letting go? On you, and I will. I will let the rope go. Okay. When you let go, you hear something go, and then a thunking noise. <laughs> ha! Take that, you fool monstrosity. As I said, probably for the best. And then the clicking noise that you've all been hearing all around it starts <laughs> to intensify, echoing all over this chamber. Just like. Maybe we should get off the bridge. That got their panties in a twist. This one thinks that is a good idea. Okay. What would you like to do now? Get off the bridge. Yeah, get off the bridge. Continue onward. Red will uh, pull out her um, rope from her pack and hand it to Zito. This one lost your rope, Iron Cobalt. It was quite heavy. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, are you guys going back to? Uh, you keep it right. You might you might have better use for that rope than I do. Are you guys uh, keeping to the same formation, or are you breaking it up? So it looks like music is fording ahead without you guys. Yeah, no, I'm stopped the waiting. Of the map is... Yeah, Red would probably move. We'll keep back music at the back this time. Oh my, that's a lot of numbers. Yeah, that was a lot of numbers. Holy crap. There they go. Inching their way across the map. Dun 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 dun. The ruin. The crawling doom. <laughs> what about Kip? Kip in the back. All right. So you want Kip at the back? Uh, who's at the front? I guess Ruben is. Ruben, you're at the front? I guess. Unless Red wants to take the front. Yeah, Red, Red would go in the front. Okay. Ruben will go behind Red. Alright, what about Zito? I'll stay towards the back this time. Okay. And Lothana? Um... They thought I could take up the, the rear this time. And music in the middle? Yeah, I'll be right behind Reuven. All right. All right, buddy, let's go do this. Show them how it's done. Is anyone hurt? You know, Reuven, you are the nicest Warforged I've ever met. <laughs> I'm not a Warforge. You don't have any of the fleshy parts. You're just all metal. I'm a thunk on the side of his head. <laughs> this metal does come off, but you wouldn't like to see what's underneath. So does my metal, and you wouldn't like to see what's underneath mine either. So you guys are just having this conversation as you get to this fork. Um, the passageway yeah. uh, continues to the west. Uh, or continues to the north, you can see that it seems to open up into a bigger chamber. And then to the west, you can see that an another tunnel continues on. And you can see little alcoves with a much more intense violet glowing light coming out of various alcoves, opening up into another chamber. I don't know how it looks in y'all's map, but I've just watched Red eat Reuven three times. What? 
Reuben Reuben Reuben? keeps going in. Yeah, Reuben keeps going into red and disappearing, and I was like, man, she ate him. (laughs) My second mutation. (laughs) She's like, mmm, potted meat. Hey, Jeremy. Yes. Is Lafama moving? I can't tell. I see her moving into a wall. Because I can't move her, and she's like, it's on my screen moving all the way back from where we came. (laughs) So. You know what? Just ignore that for now. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Um, So are you guys going to the north, or are you going west? Which way do you feel? I don't know. Who's Can leading? I... Red's leading. I'm gonna cons- I'm gonna consult Azeredge and okay. see if he senses anything unlawful or whatever in a per- Uh He tells you that there is evil everywhere, all around you. Gosh. <laughs> you pointy piece of crap. Uh, <laughs> I guess Cedo right. will send his raven towards the uh, northern yeah. path. Okay. I want to speak to her. This one's or ac- This one's axe. Are you is... being stealthy as you are speaking? Me. Yeah. To are the sword? It, are any of you being stealthy as you're speaking to each other or to the sword? Because if if not. Or if so, I'm not. You guys can roll stealth checks. Jeremy, yeah. I'm full armor. Who's Jeremy? I think everyone within a mile of me can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Red would just be doing her normal thing, not really okay. focusing on it. Sure, let's all have a Might as well put jingle pass bells on me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> ka-thunk, ka-thunk, ka-thunk. Never uh, mind. <laughs> I mean, I can roll a stealth check, but I don't think anyone would like the results. Yeah, so, he's just coming down to the hallway to chant in Deus Vault. So, Zito, <laughs> you're sending your, your raven familiar ahead? Yes. Okay. Get about uh, to the limit of his uh, your sight, and it opens up into a chamber you see enclosures to the north and south of this chamber uh, and they look like boulders that have been built into crude roofless enclosures you see three to the north three to the south and humanoids in tattered clothing which are leaning against the enclosure bars with their arms dangling through them pitifully and you can hear through the raven's ears a low moaning sound echoing throughout this cavern chamber. So I think there's going to be more shifters up ahead. And I will bring my raven back. Okay. Do you want me to check out the the western tunnel too, or do you guys want to go check out that that tunnel? I think we should go where uh, your familiar family people. I mean, I'm sure that's where the prophet towards the kachunk, 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 kachunk. As Reuben is (laughs) comes to a stop where you guys are currently st- are you guys continuing to move or are you, are you talking while you're moving uh yes if they, if they're not moving she's gonna pass them <laughs> so you're just you, you just keep moving yeah. I guess we're gonna head north then okay does people need our help it would be wrong of us not to save them 
So you're yes, all heading, indeed. heading down this uh, mostly five foot, sometimes almost ten foot wide tunnel. And you head into this chamber. You can see now uh, individuals who are held within these pens. And as you all in head and enter into this place and look around, you can see there is a, a tunnel that heads immediately to the east. And there's a dull light glow coming in the distance from that one. Uh, there's another tunnel that's in the upper northwestern corner, which goes to the north. And then another that is in the western corner, which seems to go west and then curve around. And there's a gl uh, light violet glow coming from that, that direction. And there's also a little alcove that leads to nowhere. It's uh, just to the northeast, right, at, right across from one of the pens. And... Uh, you all hear a shrill voice call out, hushed, like, Rand! Is that you? This is she. I creep, creep Come here. towards it. As you get closer to one of the pens to the north, you see through the bars... A very disheveled looking swift. Oh no, my friends. All my friends. And uh, she is, her gear is wrecked. Um, there are several shifters and a few humans and a, a half work behind them. They all look in various states of just absolute tattered clothing. They look malnourished, dehydrated. And you can see that one of them has. Uh, an unconscious talon in her lap and she's like uh, got, she's wrapping a bandage around his head are they locked in there uh, it does appear to be locked I'm gonna pick that lock okay go for it do you have a lock what's picking the skill kit? for that well do you have a I have a set of thieves tools you have a set of thieves tools okay well that would be a dexterity check if you are proficient in thieves tools, you get to add your proficiency bonus. Let's see if I am. If not, Cedo can do it. What are the rest of you doing while this is going on? Yep, I'm proficient. Hey, go for it. So, dexterity check plus proficiency bonus, right? Correct. Uh, 11. Okay, 11. It, it's actually a very crude lock. Surprisingly crude. Um, with an 11, you're able to um, use your thieves tools to um, find the where you need to move maneuver it to unlock the tumbler. And the cage loops open. Swift runs out of the cage, collapsing into your arms, Red. I'm going to motion over to Zito. Zito, let's go unlock any other cages, see if there's anybody else. And All right, uh, but uh, Zito is gonna hand hand the group a few of his leftover rations. Okay. Seems that some of them are malnourished. Yeah, they all look thirsty and hungry. And uh, Swift look looks at you, Red, and says, "We came hoarsely. We came to rescue you." And she's still covered in like mud and muck from her time in the river, the mud river. I'm dumping out the 26 apples I got for everybody. Dig okay. in. Okay. Uh, as you are all unlocking the pens, correct? And they all start to like talk and, and, and they're, some of them are looking around a bit scared and they get a little closer to all of you. And, and Swift says, they nearly caved in Talon's head. He's been clinging to life for the last few minutes. Gather around and a 30 foot radius. <laughs> and uh, please quickly, and, quickly. And, and Swift says, Matt. Your friend, 
the samurai. What about Ender? They just took him. They took where Ender? They where? Oh, no, it's gear. I mean, where? They took him down the passage to the east. And she points off towards the tunnel where the, the light, the very, very faint glow is coming from. Was there a blonde elf with him? A blonde elf? Was an Ari blonde? Uh, yes, she was blonde. And Swift says, No, I, I did not see a blonde elf. They said something about the ritual. They needed him for the ritual. Oh, hurry, it's not... It's not too late. Just get going. Yes, let's hurry. Uh, everyone, you we'll have come back. We'll find a way out of here. Oh, uh... If you head across the bridge... And towards the room, you'll be able to find Kit and a couple other children that are hiding behind uh, some secret passage. You're directing the entire group toward across the bridge towards the, um, the where Kit went and hid. Yes. Okay, so you're able to relay that information. And how long does it take to cast what you're trying to cast, Reuben? An action. Okay. We are getting and for one minute off. Sorry, I was just going to say, we are four minutes past, so we're getting to a, an ending point here. I just wanted to tie everything up neatly. Well, Ruben's been wanting to heal everybody for three sessions. I say we should end it with him healing everybody and everybody cheering. <laughs> Who's hurt? Everyone. Well, uh, no, everyone... Okay. Lathana. This one is red. Desperate for aid. And Kip, take two d six of healing. You can target them, or you can just roll two d six, and we'll and just take all. We'll yeah, have them roll. You guys two, can two manually. And what? then um, it lasts for a minute, and every round for that minute, I can heal someone for two d six. I'm gonna heal uh, the guy sh uh, shifter. So wait. It lasts for a minute, what you're trying to do, and, uh, and it rolls yeah. two, 2d6 every six seconds. So yes. so roll 20d6. Because that should heal everybody up. Unless you roll all once. No, I, I only can target one person. Oh. Well, then never mind. Yeah, so... <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So I was like, you get 2d6, you get 2d6, you get 2d6, and you get 2d6. Okay, uh, so, who else? so in instead of that, then just roll 2d6, Derek, and tell them what the number is, and they can adjust it manually. Oh, I don't know how to adjust the hit points for Kip. I can do that. No, Derek, don't roll it. Just roll it once. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. And then give everybody hate. Eight, everyone gets eight hit, uh, hit points back. And then all these hurt people. Uh, okay. Seven hurt people can get get healed. Okay. Eight hit points. So you're healing all your friends plus the, the people that are, are malnourished and, and dehydrated. Yes. Okay. So, after you go through and administer healing to all of your friends, your companions, and to all of these individuals, um, they are, are the uh, shifters, humans, and half works are very carefully lifting uh, Talon's body up. He's still unconscious. Apparently, he was hurt very badly. Your healing did not much to him at all. And they all carefully 
take the passageway back south away from where all of you are currently. Before they leave, I would like to cast Spare the Dying on him. Spare the Dying only works if he's taking death saves. Oh, so he's not taking death saves. Yeah, he's not taking death saves. He's just very, very unconscious. <laughs> okay, all right. All right. Uh, so you are now alone once again. All of you gathered together in this um, apparent um, ramshackle uh, prison, if you will. You have three different um, tunnels that you can head down. You've been told that Ender was dragged into the tunnel to the east. Where would you all like to go? Only one way to go. We go east. Okay. I have, I'm having to wrap up pretty pretty soon. Yep. We're I'm getting to it right now actually. Okay. Uh, so in the typical fashion, your your marching formation, you all begin to inch along the five foot wide tunnel going eastward towards that warm light. And you can see just beyond the warm light, it opens up into a chamber. There's an acrid smell in the air of something hot and spicy boiling. And that's where we're going to end for tonight. Hot and spicy. And music. Yeah. They're making yeah. na Nashville hot chicken in there. Before I can heal you, you must go through confession. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know if this is a good idea. Out of his bag, holding, pulls out two chairs and a little curtain. <laughs> well, my best friend Clyde is a demon. <laughs> I've been to the oh. non hells and I've played music down there. Did you play hellish music? It was pretty heavy. You were worse than I thought. Well, you know, the coin was good. I hope you didn't sell your soul. Do I have one? You know, good point. True. I guess confession doesn't work and he starts packing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it never came up. Nobody's ever offered to buy it from me. I forgot how much so man. Well, I mean, you know, if you're so worried about it, I could just sell it to you. How much money you got? <laughs> Not very much. I donate tons to the church. Well, you could donate my soul to the church. Go ahead and give me whatever you got in your pockets. Wow. I got ten gold. Ten gold, huh? Athana spits out her ale. <laughs> I don't know if the 15 is going to cut it. I guess he's keeping his 10 gold. Well, I have guys. a very high insight. <laughs> well, guys, thank you for coming to our extra session. Thanks for running, no problem. Jeremy. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, next week, you guys will. I will type in 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 the chat in deep speech, so you guys won't know what I say. And I will not be here this coming Sunday. I will be at work, unfortunately. Ooh. Oh. Hmm. I'm sure they'll be fine. I'm sure they will too. You'll be running my character. Just whenever you pull out a group of monsters, look at my spell list and say, what's the most asshole thing I could do to the monsters? And Derek, then do that. Derek changed his uh, his language to to deep speech at the last second so that he could understand what I just told. I had two languages and I had one at Corey. And I'm like, well, <laughs> deep speech. What is deep speech uh, like giants and stuff? I think it's more like Dwarger and stuff like that. 
Deep speech is more an aberrate language. Oh, well then perfect. So yeah, that's what that's what I just uh, spoke to you in, in deep speech. That's what you heard. <laughs> Where do you look up languages? Do I need to drag that to my character or do I need to uh, just type it in? You just type, type it, it in. in. Yep, and you just make sure that you spell it correctly. That's all. What does the Cory speak? I forget what you... They speak Cory. Oh, okay, okay. They speak their own language. Yeah, you know, the still language. has a language lot. <laughs> hey, you guys want to see what uh, Red hooked on her her uh, rope? Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. For those of you who are still connected, this is what she had on the end of her rope. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, is that a hook horror? It is. Oh, wow. They actually look better than they did back in second edition. In yeah. second edition, they look more insect-like. Hey, Jen. Are you still with us? Or did you fall asleep? Hey. Hey. Hi. Hello. Hola. So I'm not gonna lie. I actually nerfed that fight uh, in the uh, the mutation chamber because of how yeah. uh, because of how annoyed I was with how uh, Fantasy Grounds wasn't behaving. Plus, I was trying. Did to... Did we get the unnerfed experience? No, you did not. Ah, <laughs> sorry. Um, but I did not nerf this stone so... stone bridge encounter though. You know, I'm actually glad they killed the uh, little rock thing on the bridge because my very next turn, I was getting ready to polymorph it into a turtle and tell him to kick it over the ledge. Well, I was, I was, what, what I was going to do was I was going to have it like turn into a boulder and roll across the bridge and try to knock Zito off. And then he would fall down through the fog and to the waiting arms of a hook horror. Wow, you hate Zito. <laughs> <laughs> He's the first one that went across the bridge. It was going to be whoever went off across the bridge. He was brave. Zito is brave. He was the brave one, let's be honest. Man, if I went across the bridge first, y'all would have come around the corner and said, where did those two chickens come from? And I'm like, ah, they were here. Let's keep going. <laughs> let's get. You guys are getting close to the uh, the end of the dungeon. Oh, really? So yeah, so close. I know, oh, I'm well, trying then. to save my level 6 spells. Well, then everyone coming around, coming around, I need a heal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again, it all depends on which way you guys decide to go. I got to use music properly tonight and get my Tasha's uncontrollable laughter in. <laughs> that is seriously one of the most underrated uh, spells ever. Really? Yeah, because I mean, he can't do anything but sit there and laugh, and you get advantage on him every time you hit him after that. He's just stuck. Ah. Is it better than Hex? Well, Hex is good if you do a lot of damage, like if you do a lot of individual hits. Like, let's say I had the ability to cast Magic Missile and Hex, then that would be insanely high damage because it would do the D6 for every single hit. Uh, that's why it works so well with Eldritch Blast. Ah. But if I'm not going to Eldritch Blast somebody, I don't bother with the Hex because with the um, other spells I have, they can completely incapacitate creatures, like my Confusion spell. Mm. With that, they've got a 20% chance to make a normal attack. Everything else is them running away, going in opposite directions, staying there doing nothing. Uh, Tasha's uncontrollable hideous laughter is, you know, fall to the ground prone, do nothing, get beat on. Uh, then there's my newest spell, which y'all haven't seen yet. I'll tell you about it. Ah. Irresistible Dance. They don't get yes. a save for that one. I just hit them with it and they start dancing. No save <laughs> whatsoever. It's a level six spell, one. though. Yeah, I'm waiting for it, too. Now, they do get a save on their turn. So if like the bad guy goes before me and then I hit them with it, 
they're stuck until the next round. They're just sitting there dancing in place. 